Hello. Hello, everybody. Hi, David. Hi. <laughs> I'm David Heathfield, and welcome to this Crest Taster. I run a course called Creative and Engaging Storytelling for Teachers. I'm a storyteller and a teacher and a teacher trainer and a writer. And it's a course that I've been running for several months now. And it's very exciting to be the course leader and the course creator. And with me in the Zoom room today are a few people who have, a few wonderful people who have done the course uh, with me over the last months. So can I ask you just to introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Jackie and I'm a storyteller and I do some voluntary teaching of English in our local area and I live in Scotland. Hi, I'm Simona. I live in the north of Italy near Milan and I'm a teacher. Hi, I'm Chiwei. I'm from Singapore. I'm just uh, very new to storytelling. I'm learning how to be a storyteller. Hi, I am Lamia Tamimi from Hebron, Palestine. I am an English teacher. And after taking two remarkable courses with David, I happily announced I'm going to be a storyteller. <laughs> Namaskar, everyone. I'm Shikha Gurung from Nepal. I'm English language arts teacher here. And I've been telling stories since 2018. And I run a story storytelling event with my students in Nepal. Thank you. Wow, it's wonderful. Wow, it's wonderful to have people with lots of experience and people who are still at the early stages, but becoming storytellers. Although I would say all of you now are storytelling teachers. And I can just see there's a couple of people that some of you know who've already joined us on the Facebook Live. I can see that Evrim is here. Hi, Evrim from Turkey. Diana, who's done the course from Gaza in Palestine. And there's a person I haven't met before called Karun. So it's wonderful that people are joining. And please do tell us who you are and where you're from if you're watching on Facebook. And are you a storyteller or a storytelling teacher? So uh, let's begin. Um, well, we've already begun. And I'm going to just talk about storytelling a moment, what, we ref what I mean by storytelling. So storytelling is about telling a story, but different from maybe reading a story aloud. So it's a story that comes through us, that we tell because it's a story that we know, that we've learned, and probably a story that we love. And we know the people who we're telling it to would also enjoy this story because of our knowledge of them. So that's what uh, we're doing on these courses. So this is a, a taster session. It's about 45 minutes, and it will give you a taste, a sense of what doing this course might be like. So it's uh, a story I'm going to tell you is set in the winter, which is why you've got this wonderful wintry background. I learned a huge amount from this man, Mario Rinvalucri, and he said to me, David, you're a storyteller. Really? I said, Mario, really? And because it was Mario, my teacher, I began to believe him. And certainly <laughs> soon after that, I started calling myself a professional storyteller. That was about, oh, uh, let me see, nearly 20 years ago. And Mario is a huge influence. He says about storytelling, if a teacher reads the story from a book, the page is often between her and the students. When she tells, she is a fountain and the words of the story gush forth from her. She and the story are one, as the, the water is with the fountain. And I think this is a wonderful analogy that there's no separation between the storyteller and the story. We can stand behind the story, alongside the story, but we are conveying that story from ourselves. And this is just a few of the people that I've learned stories from. Um, I often learn stories these days from people that I meet. And these are all people that I've had contact with through English teaching. Some of them have been my students. On the left side, you can see Constantino from Angola, and uh, Iman, a refugee from Libya. Down on the bottom left, there's Natakan from Thailand and next to her, ML from Turkey. And next to her is Francisco from Guatemala. And on the right, I met this young woman through Sika, who's in the room with us now. She's one of Sika's students who performed in 
the storytelling festival, Lumana Tamraka. So these are the kinds of people that I'm learning stories from these days. Any opinions in the room about what I just said about storytelling? Would anybody like to just comment on that? Jackie. I, I missed the, the very beginning, David, because I dropped out, but um, I, I think that whole idea of storytelling being much more intimate than reading from a book, I think is definitely, you know, there's that connective thing that is really important about storytelling. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. A connection that we make. It's you and me together listening and it becomes a we, a community. Storytelling is all about community. And is there one more comment from somebody? Simona. Well, starting from what Jackie just said, uh, I feel that uh, telling stories during uh, an English lesson uh, without a book, uh, uh, it's something that really connects uh, the teacher and the students because we often uh, have to do exercises on a book. But when you ask your students to close the book and just uh, sit there and listen to you telling the story and participate, um, it's something really different from uh, the usual English lesson. Thank you very much. Yes. And in the in the Facebook, Diana's just commented, storytelling is an art, not just a narration. And I think that's so true. There's an art in the storytelling teacher. Um, wonderful. So I'm going to tell you a story, but we're going to tell, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a personal story followed by a popular folk tale. And then I'm going to ask if you have a personal story to tell. And have you ever wanted something with all of your heart and you've wanted it for a long time and whatever you do, that thing that you wanted, you can't get it. But then something unexpected happens. And as if by magic, that thing that you've been trying to get for so long comes to you. I wonder if you've ever had an experience like that. Let me give you my example. For years and years and years, I've been traveling the world. I've been going to many different parts of the world and I've been telling stories. And fortunately, people come to the UK where I live to learn at conferences and I tell stories to people from all over the world. But often those visits are very short. I might spend a couple of hours with a group. Or if I go to another country, I might spend a couple of days with a group. But what I've always wanted is a way of actually getting people together from different parts of the world, from different cultures, and sharing those cultures in a room. I'm very interested in sharing cultures, in diversity, and celebrating that diversity. And then there was a pandemic called the coronavirus, and everything went crazy, and things stopped and ground to a halt. And I didn't know what to do. I lost a lot of my work traveling. But then suddenly I realized, well, I, I've done webinars before with teachers in different parts of the world. Perhaps I could run a course with people in different countries. So this year, well, in the last few months, I've actually, you know, run a course and it's run several times now. And it's happening. People are coming from all over the world to learn about storytelling together, to share their cultures and their ideas, and it's absolutely magic. But this might never have happened without this terrible pandemic that's led to this wonderful opportunity. So that's my example. So I wonder if you've got an example. So have that in the back of your head while I tell you a story. A time when you really wanted something for a long time. Maybe you dreamed of this thing, but you couldn't get it. But then in the end, you did get it, but almost by magic, almost by chance, it fell into your lap. <laughs> so here's the story. It's a story that's popular in Russia. 
It's a story that I learned from a Russian student many years ago, so many years ago that sadly I, I don't remember the name of the young woman who told it to me. But it's a story from central Russia, from the Urals, from a place where there are a lot of shamanic um, ways of living and believing. So there's an element of animism and magic and nature and life very close together. Those of you in the room and those of you who are on Facebook or on YouTube watching a recording of this, you can all participate in the story with me. You can be muted, but you can still join in with me. Story, story. Once, sorry, <laughs> long ago, there was a mother. And she and her husband had lived for many years wanting a child, a daughter. She dreamed of having a daughter. If only I could have a daughter that I could raise and love. The other people in the village, they had children, but this woman, she could not. And as they grew older, she grew sadder. Now in this part of Russia, the winters were cold and one midwinter, the snow was lying as thick and deep as ever. It was bitter cold and she went out on that solstice night, the shortest day, the longest night. She went out as it was growing dark and she began to gather snow. She didn't think about what she was doing. It was natural. It was automatic. She gathered snow into a pile. She shaped the snow into a body and a head. And then with her strong and clever fingers, because she was a hard working woman, she crafted a girl out of snow with beautiful hands and feet and features and hair. Such art. And then, now it was dark, she went inside and slept. In the morning, at first light, she heard a wonderful sound, a tinkling light laughter. What is this? She rose from her bed and went to the window and outside, running through the white snow, was the beautiful snow girl. During the light, she had come to life. Oh, she was so pretty. She leapt and span and danced. And then the snow girl looked through the window and said, Mother! The woman rushed to the door and the snow girl ran and jumped into her arms. I have a daughter, husband, husband, come and see. We have a child. Well, her husband was as amazed as she was. She went outside with her daughter. She took her around the village. This is my daughter. Well, all of the children were delighted. A new friend and she was so pretty. She was so pale and so beautiful. She shone. The other children played with the snow girl. And then she came inside and while well, she and her husband looked after their daughter. The days passed and there was great celebration, great joy. She forgot that she had ever been childless. The time passed. Why, the snow girl was the most popular child in the whole community. She led the game, she led the laughter. Everyone loved the snow girl. The whole of the community seemed to revolve around her. The winter began to pass. And the first thaw began, the snow began to melt. There was warmth coming in the air from the south. Now in this part of Russia, when the spring comes, there is a celebration. And in that celebration, in the middle of the village, they light a fire, a fire to celebrate new life. And the fire was lit and all of the children and parents and grandparents gathered around the fire to sing and play music and dance 
and there was the snow girl beside her loving mother. Well, I guess that whether you've heard this story or not, you know what's going to happen. The children began to chant. Here are the words, say after me. Run with laughter. Jump with joy. Every girl and every boy. Run with laughter, jump with joy. Every girl and every boy. Run with laughter, jump with joy. Every girl and every boy. Run with laughter, jump with joy. Every girl and every boy. All of the children were singing and chanting and the parents too. And the first boy, an older boy, ran forward through the snow and jumped over the fire. This was the celebration the end of winter, warmth and life was coming. And the next girl ran and she jumped over the fire and the next child and the next, and the chanting was louder and louder. Let's say it together. Run with laughter, jump with joy, every girl and every boy. Run with laughter, jump with joy, every girl and every boy. Run with laughter, jump with joy, every girl and every boy. There was only one child who had not jumped through the flames. The snow girl. Go, daughter. It is your turn now. But mother, I, I will remain with you. <laughs> My daughter, you are one of the children. You belong. You need to jump over the fire. The spring is coming, my daughter. And the snow girl looked up at her mother and smiled. And she ran, she ran so fast and light towards the fire and she leapt into the air above the flames and she was gone. A vapor. And everyone fell silent and stood. And the other adults looked at the mother and her husband. Sorry. And then one by one they turned and walked away. And then the children left too. So just that mother and her husband stood by the fire. And finally, her father, the father led the mother away back to their small house and she went to her bed and in the morning she didn't get up she was so sad oh my daughter the next day again she didn't get up friends came but she wouldn't eat she wouldn't see them the time passed the summer came the children began to forget their dear friend, the snow girl, and all of the people of the community. Well, they carried on with their lives, but the mother, she couldn't forget. She never rose from her bed. Her husband could do nothing for her. The autumn came and the leaves fell from the trees and the first snows came. And by midwinter, that woman was close to death. But on that midwinter, that solstice eve, she dreamed. And in her dream, her daughter, the snow girl, came to her, smiling. Mother, do not cry. Remember me. I am your daughter. I will always be your daughter and you are always my mother. I am with you. I am with you in every flake of snow that falls, every drop of rain. I am with you in the ice on the pond, in the babbling brook, in the wide river. I am with you in the lake. I am all water, the water you bathe in, the water you drink. I am always with you. 
And in the morning, a great heaviness, a great weight was lifted from her shoulders. She rose from her bed and she ate. And soon she was well, because now she knew that she was and would always be a mother. Thank you for listening. So I ask everyone, you in the room and you who are watching the recording, what one moment in that story is the most impressive, the, the moment that you can't get out of your head from that story. Could you just choose one moment from that story? It might be near the beginning, it might be near the end, it might be somewhere in the middle, but just choose one moment. Could you just give me a thumbs up to tell me you've chosen one moment from the story? Any one moment, everyone's chosen a moment. And I'm just gonna ask you a few questions about that moment. I'd like you to, to stop that moment in the story, put it on pause and look at that moment long and hard. What can you see? The shapes, the colours, the forms, the light, the darkness, the shadow, the movement. Walk around, get a sense of the movement and the, the picture in 3D, if you like. Come in close and look at the features of the characters at that moment in the story. What smells and tastes are there? What sensations? Heat? Cold? What emotion? What sounds? Let's not forget the sounds. And can I just ask a couple of you to share with us the moment that you're imagining from the story? Just put your hand up if you'd like to tell us and just describe briefly the moment that you're imagining. Sika? Okay, the moment is run with laughter, jump with joy, every girl and every boy. The sounds of children, happy children is coming to me and I can feel the warmth of the fire, you know, and then I can feel the happiness in the environment. Uh, yes, I, I, and I went back to my childhood. If you're on Facebook or, or YouTube, just write in what your moment is. But thank you so much, Sika. That's a fabulous description of that moment. You really brought it to life. Put your hands if you liked what Sika said. If you have the same moment as Sika, put your thumb up. Or you have a different moment. Okay, that's Sika's moment. Let's remember Sika's moment. Can you remember? Let's have another moment, another powerful moment from the story. Who's going to tell us? Simona. Uh, my moment from the story is uh, of when uh, everybody has left the, um, the party and uh, just the two parents uh, are left there. And uh, I can hear the crackling sound of the fire burning and no other sound. Uh, and everybody's, uh, everything's dark. There's the fire that uh, um, puts light um, to the to parents there standing there because they um, their daughter is gone. Wow, that's such a powerful description, Simona. I can really feel, even though you didn't mention the emotion, I think I can feel it. So thank you very much. Beautiful. Did anyone else choose the same moment of the two parents left alone by the fire? Wow, okay. Um, well, I'm just gonna see if anybody yet in the Facebook comments has chosen a moment. The moment of creation, says Jürgen, the moment of creation. So I guess you're talking about Jürgen, the moment when the, the mother is creating her daughter out of snow, almost in a dreamlike state. Thank you, Jürgen, that's beautiful. Can we start with Jürgen's moment? Let's do a freeze. OK, so I'm just going to stand up. If you're comfortable to stand up, you can stand up too. OK, and Jürgen's moment, you can do it wherever you are, if you're watching or live or recording. And a freeze is when we use our body to make a steel image. We're telling a story with our body. 
So I'm going to be the mother and I'm creating my daughter out of snow. And I'm going to freeze. I'm going to use every muscle in my body. Let's all do it together. Three, two, one, and freeze. Beautiful. Thank you very much. And now let's have Seeker's Moment. Do you remember Seeker's Moment? And it's all the children. So let's be one of the children leaping over the fire. Get ready, everyone. Make a really powerful frozen moment. Three, two, one, and freeze. Wonderful. Thank you. And then Simona's moment. You can be the mother or the father left standing alone by the fire. Three, two, one, freeze. Oh, thank you. Those are such beautiful moments. I'd like to just ask you to choose one more moment and I'm going to suggest it. And uh, I'd like you to choose the moment when the daughter leaps into the air over the fire and her mother is watching full of joy. Everybody's watching. She's the last child of the community to jump over the fire. And she disappears. She's gone. And we know why she's gone. If you were going to represent that moment. Now, if I have, if I had time and I was working with a group of young learners of English, children or even teenagers, I might ask them, how could you represent that moment as a piece of art? And it might be two dimensional or it might be three dimensional. It could be sculpting, could be painting or drawing. How would you represent it? And you might give them a task that's just you know, do it in five minutes but you could give them a task where you say you could give them two days to create something either alone or together so i'd like to ask you in the room and everybody who's watching how would you represent that moment of the girl leaping over the fire and disappearing so don't draw it or or make it right now if you want to you can do that later and show me in a photograph or share it on the on the face on Facebook maybe. But right now, just describe what materials would you use? How big would it be? What would it be abstract or would it be very real, very figurative? Would you use photography, for example? What colours, what shapes, what atmosphere? It could be any kind of art form representing that moment. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to, I'm going to ask one of you to talk about it, but the others, could you just write in the chat how you might represent that moment from the story? Or even if you want to, how you might ask young learners to represent that moment in the chat. And the people watching, you can also write in the comments. Okay, so, but is there one person who would just like to, while, while everyone else is doing that, would like to just tell us their own idea? Sika, please. Uh, well, after doing the crest course with David, uh, the creative response have, has been my favorite. And I've done that, I've tried with my friend, uh, with my students, sorry. And I know my students very well. Uh, and I know that uh, they love drawing. So uh, most of them would love it. So I'd go for the majority of them rather than addressing only some of their needs, some students need. So yes, I would tell them to draw the moment because children, you know, they love playing with colors. Uh, drawing would not be limited to uh, one kind of drawing. It could be any, any, you know, whatever you're comfortable with maybe a stick drawing or, or you know, painting what, with whatever you have or normal drawing, you know. So I would tell them to do that. I've done this and I've seen that my students love them and, and they come up with beautiful- so this, is a, uh, so this is quite an instant piece of artwork that they do immediately yes. after the story. Is that right, Sika? 
Uh, yes, yes, David. I've seen some of the examples of your students' artwork that mm. you've shared, and they're wonderful. Absolutely. And you've done that with teachers as well, haven't you? When you've been sharing storytelling ideas with other teachers yeah, in the pool. Uh, yes, I, I've done that, yes. It's fantastic. It's my personal favourite too. <laughs> yes. Sika inspired me at a talk a couple of years ago at the IATEFL conference about creative arts in learning English in Nepal. And it was really inspiring. There's a lot of creativity going on among many teachers. I got inspired too. I'm, I'm a storyteller because of that session, David. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. It's a good meeting. It was a good meeting. So uh, the other people, I think you're still writing, but do share your, do, do share your ideas in the chat. Well, I'm just uh, seeing in the in the chat on here, there's a person called Shalni Doshi. Oh, hello, Shalni. And she's talking about using colour. So, Shalni, can I ask you, can you give us more detail of how you would use colour to represent that moment of the girl jumping and disappearing in the flames? So... Post in the chat here. Is there one more person in the room who'd just like to read to me or tell us what you've actually been thinking about? You might have listened to Sika, you might have a similar idea, but is there anyone in the room who's had a different idea of how they would represent that art, that moment in artwork? Jackie. I, I'm not artistic like Sika, <laughs> but I, uh, I have this idea, I don't know if it would work, of some kind of mixed medium. I, I'd love to con um, contrast the, the fiery reds and yellows and orange of the fire with the girl as she disappears, get that sort of ethereal. So I imagine sort of black ink with silver for her and something vibrant and bright for the, the fire. That Quite sounds awesome. wonderfully creative. <laughs> I, in the head, putting it on paper is different. <laughs> yeah. And on the Facebook, Shalni just uh, expressed a little bit more. She said, I would use a more abstract representation, just drawing a circle and shading different colours into it. So a beautiful abstract representation. And it would represent the emotions of the scene. So uh, an abstract representation of the emotions. Wonderful. Seekers added another idea in the chat. I think digital comic making project would be a good creative response. So you've got the instant drawing, but then that can be extended into uh, digital art. Um, wonderful. Thank you very much. Have you got in a, an idea, Lamia, about how you might represent it? Or the, you, you work with, um, do you work with teenagers, Lamia? Yes, we are, I teach um, from 11 to 16 years old. I imagine I ask them to draw the girl and while she is disappearing, uh, they will use sparkles or glitters as if she was in half, half disappearing, half leaping. Mm. And great for strong fire. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah. That's a very powerful moment in the story. Of course, it's a, it's a moment of sadness, but then I love the hope at the end of the story as well, that the daughter will always be with her and she will always be a mother. And this story can be interpreted in many ways. I mean, we could also look at it as a story about loss, about dealing with bereavement, about transience, and also being part of nature, connectedness to nature. But I introduced the story also as being an uh, about creation, how sometimes when we want something it comes to us in an unexpected way and I told you the story about how this course working with teachers from so many different places like you are coming together and sharing our ideas and our cultures through traditional stories and personal stories so we, have you thought of a story where you really wanted something for a long time and then it came to you almost in an unexpected way but it did come to you. And I'm not expecting all of you to tell a story because some of you will be storytellers and some of you will be listeners. So just I, ideally there would be two or three of you with a story to tell. Um, so has anybody got a story to tell? A time when you wanted something for a long time, imagine that waiting and that 
period of time and then it happened so think about the who was involved in the story when did it happen what was the outcome it could be something small it could be something very significant but remember this is going to be shared with many people so um yeah be careful about what you share <laughs> as well so who would like to tell a short story to another person in a breakout room maybe Simona's got a story, Jackie's got a story, and Seeker's got a story. Okay, so I'm going to set a task then in breakout rooms. Okay, so Seeker, can you uh, tell me your story in the main room? Um, Jackie, can you tell your story to Chi Wei? And Simona, can you tell your story to Lamia? And this is all about listening. So after Seeker's told me her story, I'm going to summarize Seeker's story back to you. So I'm going to say, you Seeker, you, and I'm going to tell your story. You're going to use I, and I'm going to use you, okay? So Lamia, you can say Simona's story, saying what you did, and where you can say Jackie's story saying what you did, but not the whole story. It can just be a summary. So keep the story quite short for today. So can I ask you just to spend five minutes in a breakout room, listen to the story and then say it back to the storyteller. And then I'll invite you after five minutes back into the main room. And then you can, Lamia and Chiwei, you can tell us Simona and Jack Jackie's stories. Okay, is it clear? Okay, so let me make uh, the breakout rooms now. So what did we say? We said there would be, Chi Wei will be with Jackie. And in room two, we're gonna have Lamia and Simona. So I'll, I'll invite you back. After four minutes, you'll see a countdown. And then in five minutes, you should be back with me. Okay, could, could you join your room, please? Okay, so Sika, this is when we really need to listen. Everybody who's watching the recording, you can do the same. Listen to Sika and be ready to tell her story back to her. So I'm all, I'm all ears, Sika. I'm ready to listen. <laughs> okay, David, thank you. So David, this is my personal story related to uh, my professional life. Uh, it was back in the year 2019 that one of the universities opened a job vacancy for assistant professor of English. I was very excited because that is something that I always wanted ever since I started becoming ambitious. And, and I joined MPhil in English language teaching. I got various kind of exposure. So I'd always been, that is my destination. So um, I was very excited and I applied. Uh, after I applied, I got to know that there are many people who have applied too. So uh, however, I tried to make my application as impressive as possible with all the credentials, my experiences, trainings, everything. So I was quite hopeful also. So there's kind of 50-50 <laughs> hope. And then um, uh, it took about uh, three months for the result to uh, you know, come out. When the result ca came, I, I got to know that I was selected among um, uh, 800 something people. So yeah, one step further as happy super excited and I thought I would I should prepare a lot but then um, after that the second step of the uh, job announcement uh, I, I think I forgot the step but then after that uh, eight of us got selected and among those eight I was there too so you can imagine the array of hope that is <laughs> its strand <laughs> so I was like oh my God, I can become an assistant professor at this age. I mean, in this stage of my uh, career, you know? And I was thinking of, I was imagining that how proud my parents would be, how 
proud would my teachers be? How proud would everybody who loves me be? So with that hope, I started preparing. And I remember I spent about five uh, months altogether. So after that, we got to um, um, sit for examination. The examination was like for two and a half an hour. And the questions were the most difficult <laughs> till then. So I appeared and then I came to know that I passed that exam also. And I had to present, I mean, we had given three questions. And from these three questions, I had to uh, present one there and then among the faculty members. I was super excited, super nervous. However, I had to do it because I could not miss the opportunity. So I went inside with full confidence. I presented, you know, I said I would teach a paragraph uh, with, with an art-based technique of, um, uh, um, of uh, treat, I mean, uh, treating paragraph like a, a burger, you know, which has a topic sentence. <laughs> and a concluding sentences. And then there are three supporting sentences. So the faculty got very much impressed. And after 15 days, I got the um, information that I had been selected for the final round. And the final round had to be taken um, in, the, in the central uh, department of that university. So I was very happy and I prepared a lot. I prepared a lot. I kept everything aside. And I just focused on that. And the day came when I had to uh, give the uh, you know, interview. So I was the only girl. Uh, there were three men and I was only female there. So I was quite hopeful. I went inside, I was the last person. So I went there and I started giving the interview. I, like It's always been to me that I am very anxious before the interview starts, but as I go in, I become a different person. I mean, I become the way I am, you know, I don't get nervous anymore. So I started talking and I gave every answer. I was like talking about every, um, I mean, dream that I have related to my professional life. You know, I talked about storytelling also. I was, I was telling that I have a plan of doing PhD in storytelling. I'd be, you know, collecting uh, Nepali ethnic stories and so on. And then finally, I mean, the response was also very good. They were very, they were happy, they're laughing. They, they were amused by the way I was answering. So I was quite hopeful and I went um, you know, my home, I shared with my family. But then later I got to know that I was not selected. So I was, um, I, I know I, I, I got critical about my performance. I thought maybe there was something or maybe I had not finished my degree, so I did not, you know, meet the requirement of the academic qualifications also. So that way I counseled, uh, consoled myself. Mm. Then uh, I, was, I started living my life. I went back to my thesis. I started doing all those uh, you know, projects, my, prof my career, everything. And then um, one day suddenly, uh, you know, I'd been hoping that I'd been, I mean, I really wanted to do that, you know, because that would uplift uh, not only the status uh, in my family, but also in the community, you know, I mean, it, it would make a big change to my life. So, <clears throat> but then I said that, okay, next year I'll come back with a bang. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm going to do. But then uh, to my uh, pleasant surprise, one, I think it was evening time. So I received uh, a phone call from uh, one of the schools uh, of that university. So that university has different schools of different departments. So, you know, and then uh, the, the department head told me that we're offering you a job, a, a visiting faculty job to teach uh, master students. So would you like to teach? And then, and then guess what? Uh, and the subject was my favorite that is fiction and prose and i was so happy and i thought finally by magic <laughs> i got what i wanted though not that big but then uh, comparatively things were better you know though the, the the status was not that high but then i had to teach the subject that i liked and i could teach in the department i was uh, i was uh, um, i mean you know as like a family so yeah that happened to me like a magic fantastic <laughs> Fantastic. Wow, that was you, you included a lot of detail in your story, but it was so in, and it was so engaging because all of those stages you went through and then the disappointment. Yes. A short but, time though. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. And congratulations. That was a very significant moment in your career. 
Hi. Did you have time? Did you have enough time to say the yeah. story back to your partner? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. You had enough time. OK, well, Seeker's story was quite long, so I haven't had a chance to practice, but I'm going to summarize it in like one minute. So I'm going to squeeze your story into one minute, Seeker. And please listen, everybody. And people at home, you can listen and you can also, if you want to, tell us a story that the snow girl makes you think of as well when you wanted something and then eventually it happened, but in an unexpected way. So you, Seeker, applied for a position as an assistant professor at a university. And it was a very big thing for you because it was all about your improving your professional status and your ambition. And it was a long process. When you applied, there were 800 applications in the first stage. It went through to the next stage where it was reduced to a much smaller number. And each time you were being whittled down and you were having to prove yourself in that uh, process. And finally it got down to you and you were the only woman down into the, into the shortlist. And you felt that the interview for the position went well. The other professors were, were laughing. They liked your idea of a burger, a burger approach to writing a paragraph. And so you went home full of hope to your family and then disappointment because you didn't get the job. And you thought, okay, I'll come back next year. I'll come back with a bang, you said. But then unexpectedly, one day, you got an invitation to come and do some teaching at the university. And not only teaching, but also teaching exactly what you were passionate about, which was about uh, creativity and literature. So it came to you. And you're still there, aren't you, at the university, which is fantastic, alongside your teaching. Did I miss something important, Seeker, or is that the essential summary? Good enough. OK, wonderful. OK, so here's a challenge. Um, Lamia, can you tell, is it, were you with Simona? Yes. So Lamia, can you talk to Simona and tell Simona the summary of her story? So as I heard, Simone is a wonderful storyteller who loves reading so much. Okay. And her passion was to write stories a lot. So Lamia, can you talk to Simona and say your passion was to write stories? So you're talking to Simona. Okay. So your passion, Simona, was to write stories. So you began writing short stories and leave it. Then so began to write another short story and leave it. And one day, you had the dream of writing about a dead person. You thought it was a crazy idea, but you, your dream was going to go through it. <laughs> so you did it. And you wrote a powerful story about a dead man walking, and you added four characters into life. You brought life to them. Also, you had succeeded to writing four books about them. And maybe one day I'll be able to write them and have a connection with a good writer in order to, to publish your books. <laughs> Simona, what did you think of Lamia's summary? It was a very good summary. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. And is your book published yet? No, I've never published. Uh, I've written four books, but I've never published uh, anything. I'm too shy. <laughs> I am... Um confident that you will be published maybe one day chiwe please could you tell yes. jackie the summary of her story but talk to jackie hi uh jackie i hear you that uh as a young girl you you are dreaming of going to the rocky mountains the awesome mountains right and uh as you grow up, you have a chance to travel uh, to, to America on a work visa. And, and at that time, um, with, with your boyfriends, right? Then, and you were at the Black Hill. And, to, and, and in the end, you, you get to Black Hill, but you never got a chance to go to the Rocky Mountains, right? And you're so disappointed. And the second time, you're in Vancouver, right? And somehow, I cannot remember why you never got there, but in the end, you were so disappointed again. During the third time, uh, 
you negotiate with your husband. Your husband want to go to uh, for a plowing match, or we call it a competitions, and and he, he's a farmer, right? So so you negotiate. If you if you if if I go go with you, I must go to the Rocky Mountains. And in the end, you are there. And I ask you the questions, how beautiful is the mountain? You give me, wow, it's the glacial, the, the, everything is so awesome on the mountains. And make me want, I want to go also. Yeah. Thank you. Jackie, would you just like to tell Chi Wei how you, what you felt about his summary? Oh, it was better than the original. I really enjoyed his summary. Thank you, Chi Wei. Yeah. There's something very powerful, isn't there, about having our story told back to us. I mean, we could ask students to tell the whole story back to us, but here we're, we're doing a quick activity, just getting the main ideas. And this, this is building listening skills and active listening, and it's a very powerful part of storytelling. You can't be a successful storyteller without being a successful listener. Thank you so much, all of you, for sharing your stories. and. Um, yeah, there's lots of people commenting on how much they're enjoying this on the Facebook as well, which you can look at later. But let's move towards the end of this taster session. I want to just show you a couple of ideas. So I talked about the, the image of the girl jumping over the fire. And I found an image in a, in a book of Russian folk tales. And um, this is the image that I found. So it's another artistic representation. I wonder if it's anything like what you imagined. Would you like to see it? It's a very popular tale in Russia. I find this very beautiful. It seems to be some kind of combination of photography and digital art. I'm not sure exactly how it's made. But, you know, isn't it exciting to think about all the possible ways that moment could be represented? There's a, definitely a joy in the girl's face. So um, this book is the book that I, I wrote. It's called Storytelling with Our Students. And in the book, you've got um, many different uh, stories, including The Snow Girl, one of the 40 stories that I include. But the, the book is all about introducing techniques for telling tales from around the world, storytelling with our students. And each story introduces a different technique, different activity, and it's all about developing ourselves as storytellers. It's for people working in every aspect of education. It's got an introduction about the whys and wherefores and history of storytelling. And at the end, it suggests, where do we go from here as we develop as storytellers? And it's a book that we refer to on the CREST course, the Creative uh, and Engaging Storytelling for Teachers course. And it's all about bringing cultures together and learning from each other and often finding commonality. There are stories in other cultures that might echo some of the themes in The Snow Girl. Today's taster session is free. It's a chance for you to get to know what it's like to do a crest course, get a, a, a kind of idea. Um, if you've done the course already, or if you're about to, um, register on a course don't feel any obligation to pay anything for this free session and nobody should feel any obligation but if anybody is just enjoying this session who hasn't already done a course with me and isn't going to do the quest course if you want to you might want to consider putting a small donation in my paypal okay so that's uh, my paypal paypal.me and then david heathfield be very well appreciated little money in the hat <laughs> so um stop the chair there and i just want to thank the people in the room and the people watching can i just ask each of you um who are in the room could you just say one thing that you learned 
or one thing that you enjoyed about doing the Crest course, the online Crest course with me? Something that people at home might think, oh, that could be interesting for me as well. So Jackie, can I ask you to start? Well, it's a bit difficult to stick to one thing, so I'll just talk very fast and get no, more no, no, than just, one No, no, just one thing. <laughs> Okay, well, I think it was just lots of practical ideas and we learned them in a fun way, in a very relaxed atmosphere, and you build such a wonderful community of storytellers. Thank you, David. Thank you, Jackie. And who's going to go next? Sika. Well, like Jackie said, there's no one thing, but then if I have to summarize, I didn't, I actually had written that as a response also, David. So I think I didn't feel like a course. It was not like a course. This is like, you no, know, you meet people, you talk to them, you listen to them, you tell them, and then you're done with the course. You get the certificate. My God. I mean, this is the only 100% practical course I've ever done. Thank you, David. I always owe you everything I've learned about storytelling. And all my friends, I'm so happy to meet new friends here from the, the Crest, uh, uh, different uh, levels of Crest. Yes. We're a real community. We there's a there's a Facebook group, yes. and we all keep family. in contact and have follow up meetings. And we're having a party, so yeah, it's it, it, we're a, we're building a community of storytellers around the world. Thank you, Sika. And who's next? Simona. So, have you have learned uh, from my personal storytelling? I love uh, writing stories. And uh, this course also offers you the opportunity not to also not just to tell stories that somebody else uh, created, but also to create uh, stories uh, with your students. Uh, uh, so story making, uh, how to create a story all together and then tell that story. Collaborative and creative story making is something I'm absolutely you know driven by. I love it. Lamia. I loved every moment of the course. I had met wonderful family from every part of the world. I, their stories will be imprinted in my head and my heart. I began to break my shell and become more comfortable on storytelling. So thank you, David. I recommend everyone to join you and make a world of imagination. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. It is like a family. It is like a family. Yeah. And Chiwei? Yeah, for, for for me, as I said, I'm very new to uh, storytelling, but I I like the uh, dynamics in, in the groups, uh, the communities. Everybody is so positive, and uh, David can pinpoint right everyone's uh, the, the potentials and everything in you. And, and I would say, just do it, no regrets, yeah? <laughs> Thank you very much. And if there's anybody on Facebook Live now who just wants to make a comment or ask a question, feel free. Um, and then we'll come to the the end of the meeting. But thank you ever so much. What did you did you enjoy this session? Yeah. Do you, is this a story? Uh, the Snow Girl. Is this a story that you've heard before? Yeah. Some of you have heard it before. Sika, Simona, Jackie. You've heard it before. Oh, you hadn't heard it before, Sika. Is it a story that you would like to tell? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wonderful. Um, oh, in the comments, what have we got? We've got Mindy, some of you know Mindy, saying, join David's Crest course, people, you won't regret it. <laughs> well, I was just wondering if anybody has a question. Well, listen, everybody, if you have a question, it's easy. Just send me a message on Facebook or send me an email. Um, and there's information about how to contact me in the information about the course, which you can also find on my Facebook page. There's a link to Eventbrite and uh, yeah, there's always another course coming up soon. So thank you so much to everybody in the room. Stay, stay where you are, but I'm gonna close the stream now. So goodbye to everybody who's watching live and everybody who's watching this recording on Facebook or story, on YouTube. Story. Goodbye and Tell story, story. Join story, us, story. creative us and engaging storytelling for <laughs> teachers. <laughs>